This is KGW News at 11. And we begin at 11 with a world record shattered. Ryan Krauser, an Oregon native and graduate of San Barlow High School in Gresham, set a new shot put record at the Olympic trials tonight. Thanks so much for joining us at 11 on this Friday night. I'm Morgan Romero. That shot put record had stood since 1990. KGW's Art Edwards takes us to Eugene for Krauser's big moment. An amazing moment at Hayward Field. Ryan Krauser, the Sam Barlow graduate, destroys the old world record in the shot put. Krauser's effort, 76 feet, eight and a quarter inches. To do it at the new Hayward Field, where I kind of had some of my first track meets growing up was, was really special. And I haven't been home since 2019. It felt really special to be here in front of friends and family. And uh, I felt like it was a great opportunity and it all came together to showcase all the hard work and dedication that that I've committed uh, during this past COVID year and, and beyond. But uh, so it, it still hasn't quite settled in, but uh, yeah, it, it definitely means a lot. Krauser set the world record in the first final of the Olympic trials. A short time later, it was time for the distance runners in the 10,000 meter final. Woody Kincaid, a former University of Portland runner, won the event. Galen Rupp, a star from Central Catholic in the University of Oregon, finished sixth in what might have been his last race at Hayward Field. His focus now is on the marathon. It's always just such a special place for me to come back. I love the community. I love the U of O. I love everything about it here. So I really wanted to take advantage of this opportunity and, uh, you know, get back to racing and, and competing. So uh, from that standpoint, it was a, it was a great experience for me. And um, I think this is going to really uh, be a good springboard for me as I get really back into the heavy marathon stuff. Former Oregon sprinters, English Gardner and Jenna Prandini both advanced to the semifinals of the 100 meters. The semis and the finals are both scheduled for tomorrow. These trials are off to an amazing start. Art Edwards, KGW Sports. Oh, and you know these athletes have been waiting so long for this. Stay with KGW for coverage of the Olympic trials. You can watch live at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And we've got two hours of live coverage on Sunday evening from 6 to 8. Some cities in the metro area are asking people to save water because of a chlorine shortage. It's voluntary if you live in Lake Oswego or Tigard, but it does come ahead of a very hot weekend. Here's Bryant Clerkley. The shortage is affecting the entire West Coast. Small amounts of chlorine are used in the water to make it safe to drink. So in order to conserve the supply, people are asked to cut back on how much water they use. The situation with chlorine is a, a different uh, problem to deal with and we're we're adjusting how we're looking at that. Brian Rager runs the Public Works Department in Tigard. A problem with equipment at a West Coast chlorine plant is the cause of the shortage. It's prompted a conservation effort in Lake Oswego and Tigard. The cities have a partnership. Uh, reducing uh, their how long they take showers, uh, turning the water off as they're brushing their teeth, also reducing the frequency of irrigation on their lawns and how often they irrigate their lawns. Brian says if there's a drought, they might have to ask residents to conserve even more water. I mean, we just take shorter showers, run the dishwasher and washing machine about once a week when we need to do it. And that's pretty much it. And this morning I noticed that when I was brushing my teeth, I shut the water off. <laughs> little things. Brian says the water conservation request is voluntary for now, and they're hoping the chlorine shortage will end in the next couple of weeks. Until then, Rager hopes everyone in the cities will do their part. Like I will actually start taking like shorter showers and stuff now just to make sure that we have good drinking water because that's important. At this point, there's no fear of running out of chlorine. Tigard, Lake Oswego, and other cities in the state are working with the governor's office and several agencies to make sure the cities have enough until the problem at the plant is fixed. I'm Brian Clerkley, KGW News. Developing tonight, the search is on for a man accused of killing three people in North Bend. The manhunt stretches from Coos County to Lane County. Police say it started this morning at the Mill Casino RV Park. The suspect ran over a couple, killing one of them. The officers say he later shot and killed someone at a marijuana dispensary. They also discovered a third person dead back at the RV park. The victim owned a white pickup truck, which was later found crashed and set on fire on Highway 126. That was by milepost 39 in Nodi, west of Eugene. Police are asking people to shelter in place and watch for any suspicious activity.
The advice to the people in the area is, is of course, don't pick up any hitchhikers. Don't stop uh, for pedestrians uh, if you are in the area right now. Um, if anybody, if you see anybody hitchhiking in the area, please call us. Uh, and of course, if you picked up a hitchhiker. Yeah, good advice. Police have not identified the suspect yet. He is described as a white man, six foot two, 200 pounds, and last seen wearing a dark blue t-shirt and blue jeans. Police in Oregon City declared a riot at Clackamas Park today because of a fight between members of the Proud Boys and members of Antifa. Police say the two groups had been planning to fight on social media ever since another confrontation weeks ago. Both sides had guns, pepper spray, and bear mace. A few people got injured. Police say so far, no one has been arrested. The time has come. Mass vaccination clinics at the Portland Airport and the Oregon Convention Center are closing down for good tomorrow at noon. The falling demand for COVID shots means people don't really need these sites anymore. Volunteers helped staff run these clinics since January. They say they're so proud of the work they've done. I think it feels great. It's 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 maybe not the the type of history you want to be involved with, but this is the hand we were dealt and it's encouraging and it's uplifting, especially with all the negative things going on. It's it's great to be involved with something that represents Portland as it should be. Yeah, they help make history. The closing of the Red Lot and Convention Center sites does not mean there's no more vaccine. There's more than enough to go around in Oregon and Southwest Washington. So if you need a shot, contact your county health department. Juneteenth, June 19th is tomorrow, but since it falls on a Saturday, today is actually the federal holiday. The day commemorates the end of slavery in the United States. Portland has held an annual citywide celebration since 1972. In the past, it featured an outdoor parade, which you see there, but with COVID, of course, like all things, performances and speeches will be live streamed this year on Saturday with the help of PDX Jazz. Portland radio station, The Numbers FM, will also hold a Juneteenth event in Old Town with vendors, food, art, and music. And then nonprofit Albina Vision Trust has a community teach-in tomorrow about the Northeast neighborhood's past, present, and future. Organizers say it means a lot to host these celebrations in the state of Oregon, which actually began as a whites-only state. Here in Oregon, it's extra special and important that we celebrate this holiday just to acknowledge that this state has progressed and moved on from that racial initial launch. President Biden signed a bill yesterday establishing Juneteenth as the country's 12th national holiday. Earlier this month, the Oregon Senate agreed to recognize it as a state holiday starting next year. And new at 11. As graduation season continues, a group of eighth graders just celebrated their promotion to high school. Our Catherine Cook takes us to Wilsonville, where one girl really went out in style. This was a tough year for a lot of kids, so celebrating all together meant a lot. For one student, getting to bring the friend who got her through it meant even more. At Meridian Creek Middle School in Wilsonville. It was a day for eighth graders to spread their wings. And this is just a perfect send off. A promotion to high school. It is a special moment to be done with your middle school years. After one last lap around this lot. We had kids coming through in convertibles on the back of trucks and then we even had Caitlin arrive on her horse. That would be Tinkerbell. This is Caitlin. And it seemed like the perfect opportunity when they said ride through, so took advantage of it. Tinkerbell dressed in school colors and held her head high. She seemed to know this was a big day. She knows Caitlin. I've had her for about six years, so it meant a lot. That's what I was really excited for and actually what I was looking forward to the most because she helped me get here. This promotion ceremony didn't happen last spring, and for most of this school year, students learned remotely. Caitlin's mom is grateful that's over. It was hard. I mean, who likes staring at a screen, you know, all the time? And um, for her, it was her horse gave her every outlet that she needed. If she was stressed or if she was, you know, anxious or if she was feeling down, it'd just be like off to the barn she went to spend time with Tinkerbell. And in those countless hours spent with her friend, Caitlin discovered what she loves most about horses. And then it all makes sense. They teach you how to like persevere and not give up when it's hard. Like you have to keep going until they get it right. Getting it right, and especially on this day, 
getting it done. When you make it through and get to the end, you know, they really feel like they've accomplished something special. And In Wilsonville. The best ending we could ask for. Catherine Cook, KGW News.